I think what people don't understand is we're not building a new service. Like maybe I shouldn't be saying this as much as I say it, but like, no, like I'm interested in core recommendations. I'm interested in the science of utilizing people's tastes and profiles to make sure that the world serves them. And I'm not talking just like Pandora and I'm not talking like product recommendations. I'm not talking like it's all of the above. The idea that you can take behavior or or data and, and use it for a person's benefit rather than for the company's benefit is fascinating to me. And it just so happens that news is a great place to start because there's a ton of information out on the web. Machine learning is very, very good at analyzing it. And we can build portraits very, very quickly. And the hope is when you sign up, by the way, this is the crazy part. I think about this, like people like to think they're really unique, right, Mike? Like people are, they're like, oh, I'm like super unique. I have all these super unique interests. The core thesis behind recommendations is like, actually, like there are like groups of people that tend to think a lot alike, not just ideologically. We're not talking like left, right, politically. I'm saying like, if you're in San Francisco, we can almost guarantee you're going to enjoy reading about startups from TechCrunch. It's like not that hard to guess. Like you're generally not wrong. Or if you're super into the Atlantic and you're reading a bunch of mental health and wellness stuff, we know there are a bunch of associated categories with that and publishers with that. Um, so your initial recommendations actually can be pretty spot on, which is pretty crazy. Um, but to get to the level we want to get to, you do have to be much bigger where my interest in hi-fi audio systems is represented or Japanese architecture is represented. We're not quite there yet. But man, we basically, we chose an idea where the ideal, we know what it needs to be, but bootstrapping it, that activation energy required is just like really hard. Now, the, the last thing I'll say on this is, but because we are who we are, we can get some amount of press, a fair amount. We have hundreds of thousands of people sign up the first day. Like enough people can get in that you can bootstrap it where if you're just some pair of like this is not a company we could have started at a dog patch labs in 2010 it's just not that we couldn't have done it um so it is an unfair advantage to get some eyeballs and the hope and the bet is that you can take that initial attention parlay it into just good enough recommendations for a certain set of people and then basically bootstrap and bootstrap and expand and expand and and uh and hopefully hopefully we can expand our purview over time can i ask a weird one how do you define a retained user is it number of articles consumed is it number of shares is it number of time on app what's the definition for your retained user like are they coming back and are they you know browsing feed and reading articles and that's you know the core the interesting thing for what we're building is even if you join and you, you know, the social part is, you know, in a very small closed group right now as we like develop it. But if you join the sort of non-social bit, even if your friends aren't on yet, the world is happening, you know, like things are getting covered there, there will be something new for you that day. Um, and you know, and the hope is, you know, you come back and you know, you do get, you know, for me, I, my interests, my, my non-unique interests, I'd like to find something that actually like, uh, differentiates me from, from this particular cluster, but you know, I love Formula One. I grew up in Brazil, so you know that's a kind of core interest of mine. Other more and more, you liked Americans it before it was too. cool. I liked it <laughs> yeah. before it was. I liked it before the Netflix show. Um, uh, you know, I love, but then I also love like NFL, NBA, you know, startups, San Francisco news, architecture. Man, there is something interesting going on in multiple ones of those categories every single day, and and that's like a different. Um, a different setup than early Instagram, where I think in day one of Instagram, you know, there wasn't really a network there. You were there because the filters made your, you know, photos from your iPhone 3G or 3GS look a little better or a lot better, you know, because those cameras were, there was still a lot of work to be done on those cameras. Uh, versus here, I what's exciting and like to flip Kevin's thing, like the reason why it's a good second uh, area to start with is you get new at bats every day because you there is great content out there that you can get people in like we 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 spent a lot of time on our push notifications to try to make them relevant and you get new chances to say hey like uh if you're in a video game nintendo's doing something new you know today or there's a new balloon or not balloon or whatever that's been shot whatever these different area like areas of interest like the world is happening and, and our job with this product is help you stay connected to what you really care about deeply and, and, and maintain those, those interests. So 
those are the pieces. And then uh, if once we have you know social rollout roll more broadly, then for sure we'll be looking at you know are you are you consuming? Are you posting? Are you engaging with the content? Are you commenting? What, you know even within our closed beta group, one of the stats that we look at a lot is how many posts are happening with no reactions because it's pretty lonely if you post and like you just feel like you're speaking into the void, you know, or how many direct messages go unanswered. Um, so those, those metrics and, and, you know, it's a little bit, it's funny because there's, you know, hundreds of people using the social stuff and many, many more people using the non-social bits. And, um, you know, you have to also recognize the limits of your data, you know, <laughs> it's a small, there's a small beta group. You're not going to be able to infer exactly. Um, but I guess I'll add one thing that's interesting is so far our, you know, we had a group of how many, like thousand to 2000 people testing the product for the last year. And so far our public usage has exceeded in terms of number of stories people look at per day, that beta group, which is really heartening because you like to think that that beta group, it's like, uh, maybe four degrees of separation from us, right? It was all invite based at this point. So you figure there were people that started off predisposed to at least being interested in this idea. Um, and you just never know. It's like when the rubber meets the road, are you going to have people be like, oh, actually now that I don't, you know, I don't know Kevin or Kevin's friends, a friend, of friend, like I'm less interested and you get to see it kind of play out in real life. Can I ask you, which is like, it's so hard when you have, uh, the scaling time, but also the desire to have a simple and beautiful product. And something that I loved with Instagram was the product simplicity and design. How do you think about preventing feature creep with time and keeping that product simplicity? Because you know, news and artifact could be so many things. And that, Kevin, you mentioned DMs, you mentioned the sharing, and like, there are so many avenues. How do you retain simplicity in products? I believe a lot in this jobs to be done theory, where basically products are hired by the consumer to do something for them in their lives. You know, it's almost like having a digital assistant, right? And you have to ask why your product's getting hired. And if your employee gets new skills, that help you do that job or similar jobs better and then you're excited but like imagine having employees like hey i'm like gonna serve you really entertaining photos and videos from your friends every single day so that you can feel more connected to them and they're like and now you can shop you're like whoa, whoa, whoa hold on like that's that's like that's not why i hired you or if they say um i don't know like what's a good example of this if, if it feels unrelated it might work it might work if you're big enough, um, but at the same time, it might confuse people. And I think people can only have like enough, they only have a simple, like they can hold a complex enough idea of your product in their head, but it has to be simple. And if you complexify it, complicate it, um, they just generally don't want to open you. It's almost like in music. Um, I've been reading a lot about music and like, they talk a lot about like if you use certain tones, people will just like stop listening to your music. In lo-fi music, um, I'm gonna go get technical here or something. Like there's uh, the, in chords, there's the thirteenth. The thirteenth is oh gosh, I'm gonna every music lover is gonna crucify me on this. I want to say it's thirteen semitones. Uh, nope, not thirteen semitones. Anyway, it's above. Uh, it's above the root chord by like thirteen steps, basically, and it sounds dissonant. And like, there's all this data that says if you include it in your song because you're playing the certain chord, like it sounds dissonant and people stop listening. And I feel like products are that way too. They can just grate at you if they include things that are dissonant to the core job. So you need to be very careful about forming that core job and only adding things in when they support the core job. But right now we're what, two weeks old? We're going to be like that core job and that core only. We are vanilla ice cream, but we're going to be the best vanilla ice cream you've ever had. And like, you can have toppings later because toppings are great, but like, we're going to get to the toppings. I mean, saying you get into the toppings. I'd like an award. I worked so many metaphors in there. There was, there was the sprinkles. <laughs> there was corn. <laughs> do, you, do you know, Mike? Kevin's a DJ. He's, he's a <laughs> DJ. Okay? We, we got the semi-tones. We got the scale, everything. 